Hi everyone, it's Dr. V. I am back with another video. Now this video is just a little bit different than the other videos that I've done. So you know, science essentials, I'm trying to cover concepts in science that sometimes students may have challenges with. And you know, at the end of my um, lectures, I usually have some kind of review. Now, this video is different in that I'm going to address something that I see. Now, I'm a research scientist and a lot of college professors they're also research scientists. We just teach as a part of our um, profession, right? And so I teach all types of students. Um, I teach at a predominantly HBCU school, um, particularly at UNCF, and I love what I do. But the reason why I'm making this video is because I love working with my students and I want all students, not just mine, to do well. So this is a series that I'm gonna start talking about how to do well or how to get an A in a science class. Now, I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube that talks about, oh, how to do well in a science class. So a lot of those videos are kind of cliche-ish and they're stuff you already know. So what I'm going to talk about things that I've seen that I know does work and hopefully it can help you. So the first thing to start off with is to talk about the different types of students. All right, so we have students that love science. You know, we have those, they're the ones that tend to be the science majors, like in chemistry or biology or biochemistry. They wanna go to like medical school or dental school or pharmacy school or grad school. They wanna go in that area. Those type of students tend to love science and they have a really strong drive for the sciences. So those students usually have a, you know, better, or easier time in some of the science classes. Then we have those students that like science, but they like more of the clinical aspects of science. And those includes um, like the nursing majors, the allied health or physical therapy. They know they need these things for their profession, so they're more inclined to grasp it. Now, when we look on the other end of the spectrum, we have a set of students that don't like science and that's okay a lot of people don't like science science is not for everyone that's why we see people going into non-science um, professionals so those students that take science that you know, are not science major include like social work majors maybe psychology you may find like pre-law you may find those other individuals in the class and the thing is a part of the college curriculum, they have to take classes that are called core classes. So they end up taking science classes even though they don't like it. So this video is going to discuss, you know, based on what your major is, what is the best strategy to, you know, to study. But I'm going to have several videos, but this particular video, I'm going to talk about a topic called student responsibility and learning. So um, a lot of times what I've seen through the years is that certain students, if they're not doing well, they're more prone to blame the teacher. Now I do know there are some teachers that cannot really teach. I mean, I understand that. Um, and then there's some teachers that will teach science majors the same way how they would teach non-science majors. I understand that. And that is a challenge because that will be harder on the class, especially for those that are non-science majors. Um, but it doesn't matter how the teacher teaches, all right? So some teachers will read right off of a PowerPoint and that's all they do is read off a PowerPoint. You'll have some that will just read from a book. You have some that would just write on a board. You have some that will show videos. There's so many different styles. And a lot of times teacher teach based on how they learn, okay? Now the job of the teacher is to ensure that they're giving you the information but ultimately the responsibility falls on you to learn the information. So this takes me to my first thing. You must first identify what your learning style is, okay? So there's different types of learning style. We have the visual, we have the auditory, we have the kinesthetic, you know, the ones that can feel. You have so many different types. You have some that are kind of like a mixture of all of them. 
All right, so you're to, if you don't know what your learning style is, the first thing you should do is actually go online. There are a lot of quizzes that are there that you can take that can actually pinpoint what your learning style or learning styles is or are, okay? Once you find out what your learning style is, you're then to use that learning style to interpret the information that was given. So what am I talking about? All right, so if the teacher is just, you know, reading off of a PowerPoint or reading out of a book and you know you're a visual type of person, the best way for you to learn now is to take that information and then you will use your learning style to learn it. So if you're visual, you will go to YouTube or look for some animations that can visually explain it to you, right? Or some kind of pictures that can explain it to you. If you're someone that's more kinesthetic and there's no lab associated with the class, you can go ahead and create little models or sketch things out or just do things physically to kind of get the information. So the things that I see that successful students do, no matter the, what the style of the teacher is, is that they use their learning style to study, okay? That is really, really important. So doesn't matter what the teacher does, it ultimately falls on you to learn the information. All right, so this takes me to my second thing, okay? Um, the second thing is what you do when you don't understand the concept. This is really important, and I've seen students of all different majors, it doesn't matter what their major, there are certain things that I've seen that is uh, characteristics of all these individuals that do well. All right, so in class, if you don't understand the information, there's certain things that I see students will do. One, they will just sink in the hole because they don't understand the information and they keep sinking because they choose or they don't want to ask or get help, right? So they'll be struggling and they will struggle all through the semester. And sometimes the teacher will recognize it and to, you know, tell the student they wanna meet with them. But a lot of other times when you have a very large class, the student may kind of drown in not understanding information. So you have those type of students. Then you have those students that, you know, they're kind of scared, they're introverted, and don't want to ask questions in class and may think that their question is dumb and they don't want to be embarrassed in the class. And so those individuals, maybe at the end of class, will go and talk to the teacher to ask for an explanation of something they didn't understand. And then you have those students that will raise their hand in class as you're lecturing to clarify certain things. All right, so I know there's different types of students, but it doesn't matter which type of student you are, you must always go and seek help if you do not understand the information. One thing about science that's unlike some other classes is that usually chapters build on each other, okay? So if you're missing something that you learned in chapter two, like you just really don't get it you're gonna have a harder time when you're learning things in chapter three four five six so you have to make sure you understand those foundation um you know if you're introverted and scared you have to kind of drive yourself out of that okay so please go ahead and ask questions in class all right so the first thing in student responsibility was identifying your learning style and studying in your learning style irregardless of how your teacher teaches Second thing um, is what you do with the information you don't understand, right? Do you sit there and sink in a sea of not understanding? Or do you ask for clarification? If you don't want to ask the teacher, ask one of your friends um, later on, right, to clarify certain things for you or go see a tutor, okay? So that's important. All right, another trait or characteristic that I see across the board in all majors are you actually, or students, and this is what I see, students knowing that in a science class, they have to make sure that they are interactive with other individuals. Now, what does that mean? All right, so when you get the information and you're studying, right? You're gonna study to your learning style. You're gonna get that information. But then you have to go and meet with other individuals to ensure that you learn the information. So let me interpret that for you. So I had, I had many students, you know, that they, 
they will come to me and they said, Dr. V, I just knew I knew that information. I understood it when I was studying. And when I came and take the test, I bombed on the test. I don't understand what I did. Have, have that happened to you? That you just didn't understand and you thought you knew the information? Well, in cases of that, I mean, I've seen it time to time. So I tell the individual, okay, come to my office and I will help you study. So they're excited because they you know the teacher is going to help them study. So they'll come to my office and I will tell them, okay, this is what you need to do. I need you to study these chapters. And then when you finish these chapters, I, I will quiz you. Okay. And they're like, yes. So they come and they're all excited. They are sure they know their information. And then when I ask them the basic fundamentals, then they're kind of like fumbling like, um, I thought I understood it, but I guess I didn't. And that takes me to my point that if you cannot explain it to someone that they can understand easily, you really don't know the information. So after you study the information, you need to meet with someone, either meet with a group um, if you meet with a group, be careful you just don't meet with friends because you start chattering about other things. But you meet with individuals that you can pass questions back and forth. Now, if you know you're one of those introverted individuals that don't like meeting with groups, that's okay. You can find a tutor. You know, some schools have tutors. Find a tutor and have the tutor quiz you. Or you go to your teacher and have your teacher quiz you. All right, this is the way to ensure that you understand the information, okay? So please make sure you do that. All right, another thing that I see through the years um, is when students take quizzes and they don't do so well, they don't wanna see it, they always tell me, Dr. V, you can keep it. I'm like, what, I don't wanna keep your quiz. You need to use your quiz as study tools for an exam. Um, so they're like, oh, but that is really important. If, you're, if you've taken a quiz or if you've taken a test, I know I used to do this, if there was a question I just completely didn't understand, as soon as I left the exam, I would go through my notes to see if what I picked was right or wasn't right. I was curious to see what I did or how I did. I know in the, back in the days, a lot of people used to do that. I do see some still doing it now, but there's a lot of individual, they just take it, and when I ask them how you think you did, it's like, I don't know, I'll see when I get the test back. I get a lot of those responses now. When you go and you finish taking the exam, go back and just those answers that you put, just skim over it again in your notes to see what you put and if you got things right or wrong. When you get your test back, you should go ask the teacher if you can review the answers with them to see what you got wrong and why you got it wrong so you don't make those errors again in the future. All right, so ultimately the responsibility falls on you to see what you got wrong and why you got it wrong. You have to take that initiative. Um, and if you have an, a class that has a comprehensive exam, you should go to the teacher over the course of the semester to ask to review some of the materials that you got back to see what you got wrong. All right, so the student responsibility with those type of exams, um, quizzing, just make sure you go back over it to see what you missed. Okay, so the last thing I want to discuss in this video about student responsibility are assignments. Yes, I am talking about assignments. I know a lot of times students think that just quiz and exams are what um, you will get grades based on, but no. Teachers give assignments um, for reinforcement purposes. Yeah, so you have those type of students, as soon as they get the assignments, they do it immediately. And then you have some of those that will kind of procrastinate to do it and they will kind of half-heartedly do it and then turn it in. Then you have the student that don't do it, but they copy off of their friend's papers right before they submit it into the teacher or to the teacher. And then you have those that ultimately don't care and don't do the assignments. I don't understand why you won't do an assignment. Those are free points. And the assignments, if you're copying off of somebody else's sheet or if you're procrastinating, you're not gaining the benefit of the assignments. Assignments aren't just busy work for nothing. Assignments are there for reinforcement tools. 
And you know, sometimes some students, if the assignment is something typed, they'll copy and paste because they don't have time. No, do the assignment. Students that are A students, it doesn't matter what their major is, they do the assignment up front and they do it on their own. They don't procrastinate, they don't copy and paste, they don't try to copy off of their friends. Now, I've seen it in my class as an example. I've given assignments to the class, you know, as reinforcement tools, and I will put those exact same questions on an exam or on some other type of assessment. And those, I could tell those have actually done it. They will get it right. And then those that don't even care, and they're the ones that will get bad on it and even though they turned in an assignment they got a zero right on the assessment so just make sure you do assignments or giveaway grades they are buffers you know especially if you know you're struggling on an exam and you know assignments you know may count for 30 percent of your grade that will help you if you're not doing as well on the test those assignments will buffer your grade please do your assignments i see over the course of time over half time has gone on some students are just losing that motivation to do assignments. Don't do that. If you know, as soon as you get it, do the assignments, okay? Because you remember, the ultimate responsibility does not fall on the teacher. The ultimate responsibility falls on you. A lot of times, students, you know, listen to what I'm saying. A lot of times, teachers will get excuses from students. You know, there are things that really do happen, that legitly happen. We will work with you. I'm talking as a, a science professor, okay? But there are times that, you know, students will talk about, you know, this wasn't working, that wasn't working, I couldn't get this, I couldn't get that. You know, I would say, well, I will email you the assignment if you can't get to it. Oh, my email doesn't work. I said, okay, well, I will text you the assignment. Oh, my screen is broken. I mean, just all these excuses don't have excuses okay education is important college is not cheap okay so make sure that you remember the ultimate responsibility falls in you all right so you have to learn it now i will have more videos later on um, this next video that i'm going to do is going to talk about something really really important and that's talking about how students actually study because a lot of times students will just study all these itty bitty details and when you study all these itty bitty details they miss the connections and they miss the big picture and then they end up not doing well so just please stay tuned for that you can subscribe to um, this channel and you can also hit the bell so when I put out new videos um, you can get that notification right away now I do have other videos that teach the science concepts and that has the the quizzing feature to it so if you're one of those um, individuals you want to make sure you understand the concept just go ahead and look at those videos I'll be putting about two videos or so of concepts out a week um, if you have any questions or anything that you want me to address on how to get an A or how to do well in a science class, just leave it in a comment down below. I would also like to know what some of your challenges are in a science class. And, you know, let me know if you're a science major, not a science major, how you study. Maybe I may be able to give you some tools. I've been teaching for a while, so I kind of understand um, how the, the learning is, the learning process of the student. So until next time, um, bye.